everybody, Pastor Ryan here, and uh, I'm going to show you today how to make uh, some really cool birch trees in your hallway. Now, what do you get when you get uh, someone quarantined who knows how to paint and uh, um, loves nature and uh, loves to teach and uh, loves the Lord? Well, you're going to get uh, kind of a devotional on uh, how to paint birch trees in your hallway. Since I live in a house that uh, needed some renovations and I had a big honey-do list, well, here you go. You get birch trees down your staircase. So I'm going to do a little step-by-step, -step, uh, tell you some really cool things about some birch trees and um, a little devotional at the end. Are some birch trees like these? And you may think, well, I, don't, I can't paint this. I can't do that. There's no way. It's a super simple uh, process in making these trees. Now, I'm not actually done. I'd like to put them all the way down my hallway here. But I'm going to show you, since I'm kind of halfway done, some of the process in doing that. So the first step you're going to want to do is you're actually going to want to have a little bit of a drawing uh, to show what your birch trees are going to look like. Now, we didn't want anything that was just straight up and down birch trees in a row. It kind of looked like a little prison bars. We didn't want that. We wanted something a little more natural. So... Um, if you want, it's always good to take some references from nature. Uh, we took a couple pictures to be able to do that and then uh, put them on your wall, make some sketches, figure out how it's going to look. Because if it doesn't look right in your sketch, it's not going to look right on your wall. So I took this and, well, we uh, kind of laid them out the way we want, the way it looks good. And once we got what we liked, then we started the next process. So the second step in making your birch trees is pretty much just throwing some paint on the walls. Now, one really cool um, trick in this, now I'm using acrylic paints uh, to make our birch trees, but since it is water-based and the paint that we used on the wall was uh, um, also water-based, you can take those and mix them together. Now, we chose to have kind of the sky blue, it's called uh, geranium blue on our walls. Now the nice thing about this blue is it can kind of both be kind of a background for cloud or for uh, sky color but also if you notice um, I didn't uh, care too much as far as some of that bleeding through on the other side. Now if you use a brown or yellow or some other um, paint for your background well then you're gonna have to kind of keep that in mind because the nice thing about this blue is I can use that, notice on some of these other finished ones, that I use that as kind of the blue in the shadowing of the birch tree. So some of that blue actually kind of bleeds through, shows through, and I'll show you the process in the next couple steps. So don't worry about making your shadows look perfectly straight and your, your um, white to look perfectly straight. Just get the basic idea of where you want your trees, how you want them laid out on your wall, and then just start putting some paint on the walls. Now there are some uh, definite art skills that you need to remember uh, when painting these. Um, obviously here I've got some shadow involved in the trees. so. You're going to want to understand where your source of light is coming from. Here I decided, since I have a window here, that most of my wall, I want this to be the place where my light comes from. So that the natural light will kind of make it look like that is where the light is coming from. Now all I used in these two basic colors that I have here to start our first step is a basic titanium white in acrylic and then a little bit of for the shadow section here I used a um, mixture of the white um, basic black and then I used the same color here with this background in my um, paint for the wall and mixed that in to give it kind of a blue um, shadow because in your shadows there's lots of blue in shadows and the more you can use blue in your shadows than black, the better. So all I did for this basic tree is basically get where I wanted the tree to be, put a layer of white next to 
a section of the gray shadow. And then I'll show you what we do for the next step. So for our next step, we're gonna basically have layers of um, different textures and things to make sure that this looks kind of 3D. So we're just taking layers of steps going right over top of the other. Now you notice that I've got a little bit of a rough edge on either side because I was just kind of trying to form where I wanted the tree to be. So the next step, we're gonna smooth that out, provide um, some bright for where the sun is hitting and uh, have it kind of a, some contour lines. So first step is we're gonna get rid of these rough edges. Take your, your brush and just kind of pull it down, making sure that that bead is nice and straight. You get lots of paint on your brush. You need to add some more and add some more. It's always better to have too much paint than not enough in this section here. So we're going to smooth that line out, pulling that bead down. Now before this dries, we want some contour with it as well. Now your contours are going to make your tree look three-dimensional. If I leave it like this, the contour lines are going straight down, it's going to flatten it out, and you're not going to get that effect of being three-dimensional. So with any drawing, you're going to basically try to figure out where your horizon line is. And for me, I put my horizon line right at the baseboard here and going across. If I understand that that's where my horizon line is anything that goes up the more I go up the more my line is going to curve uh, upwards and the more I go down it's going to curve downwards so to give you an idea we're up a little ways so we're not going to go drastic with our curve but just to give an idea of a sense of um, form we're just going to do that with our brush just so that we get a sense with our contour lines that this is a curved object and not just some flat line on the wall. So here we've got a little sense of contour with our brush strokes. Now I didn't pull it all the way to the middle and then have a straight line here showing the stoppage of light and shadow because this is a, a natural um, object. It's something that is not perfect just like the rest of us. We're not perfect. Um, the same thing with our tree. It's not perfect. If you look at a smooth white birch tree, it's got pores, it's got holes, it's got all sorts of bumpy stuff inside that bark. So we're going to do the same thing with the idea here. It's just kind of a, a way to pull kind of this section here and be kind of a dry um, stroke over top, a dry brush stroke. So we make our contour lines and pull it into that black or the, the shadow just a little bit. So. We'd like to before it dries completely, and if it does, does dry completely, no big deal. But we're going to do the same thing with the shadow uh, with our mixed paint on the other side. Now I've got here my mixture of different blues and blacks and whites to kind of make my shadow. If you notice, it's, it's a lot of blue in there, which is good because I like using blue as a shadow more than using black. So I've got a lot, quite a bit on my brush up to where we started our contour lines and we're just going to do the same thing. Now this one is pretty much the same color, maybe just slightly different, and it will always dry about three shades darker than what is on your brush. So don't be afraid if it looks too light. Give it a little time and see what it turns into. So and then you can always adjust. Nice thing about paint is you can always paint over it. So I'm doing the same thing, same contour lines. Coming back over the same place, pulling it into the white. Now some of that blue from underneath the paint comes through, that's great. If not, no big deal. So as you can see, I've got some contour lines um, set there. I've got a little bit of um, paint from the first time that I set the paint down. So it doesn't matter if we don't have a nice straight line, but uh, it should, uh, should have some coverage. So then we go on to our next step once this dries completely. It shouldn't take long because one of the things about acrylic is that it will dry very quickly. Well, the next step I have is using a little bit of uh, this kind of light brown in your, your lines on the tree. 
Uh, that is because the trees are not just completely black and white. If you look over at my finished side over here, you notice that there is some different colors other than simply black and white and blue for shadow, but there's these little brown uh, lines in there as well. So we're gonna put that in kind of as an under um, painting before we put our black lines in. What I'm using is I'm just using um, a little bit more of a fine tipped uh, brush, making sure it has a nice point on it because we're gonna do some, some pretty fine um, lines on here. And then also, don't worry about um, having all the lines be super fine because you noticed over here, I've got some of them that are some dry brush strokes. Uh, if you notice in here, some bright dry brush strokes. Um, so they don't have to be perfect looking because like I said before, the bark itself has bumps and contours and all sorts of texture on it. And we want texture to happen, um, not just straight lines all the time. So, so that's what we're gonna do. Once you get the paint on your brush, uh, the next step we're going to do is we're just going to get a couple little, a little lines in here. Make sure you have that same contour idea of where the tree is. And see here we're up a little ways from our vanishing point and our, our horizon line. So we're going to give it just a little bit of a curve because we're not all the way to the ceiling. And just give it a few little lines across that tree. And if we get uh, low on our paint, we can just kind of have a little bit of a dry brush as well. You don't want to have a, a super noticeable pattern. You just want to kind of be spread a little bit here, a little bit there, um, in some of those areas. The next step is taking our black and drawing some lines on our birch. Now the lines on these birch trees are very important because these are actually called lenticles. The lenticles on a birch tree are actually the place where the um, gas exchanges um, on a tree. So this is the part where it breathes, uh, essentially. So if you don't see any lenticles on a tree, it means it's not breathing, but needs to have these in order to breathe. Now, if you notice a pattern on here, if you just simply notice um, birch trees, if you have an example to bring a, a branch in, or a piece of bark, um, or just go out into the woods and take some photos. Um, find some birch trees, check it out, observe, notice what they look like, how the bark is. And so here I've just basically got, um, trying not to get any um, pattern or just kind of spreading these lenticles uh, apart. So if you get a nice fine tip, you're just gonna go in and, and try to lightly touch as fine as you can because some of the lines are more pronounced and some of the lines are just just a little touch and so we're going to touch it all over the place and push a little harder you're going to have a little more defined line but each time and making sure that your your line is at a curve so that it looks continue to make sure it looks like a three-dimensional object so as I mentioned before, I'm not right at the top of the, the painting, so it's not going to be a huge uh, curve. But if you notice, as I go up the tree on the one that is done, my curves tend to get more drastic as I get to the top. Another thing to remember with birch trees is the smaller birch trees aren't going to have too many um, different um, flaws in them. If you notice the, the first one I had over here, I've just got a few of these little little dots, a few little spots where it's got a, uh, a little more defined areas, and then I've just got a couple little scars. I've got one spot where the birch bark is kind of peeling away, um, and then there's just a few little imperfections here and there in the bark. Now those, uh, as far as painting, just be observant, use some of the skills that you've learned in other places with shadow and light and just kind of copy what you see uh, from the tree itself. But if you're not that skilled, don't worry because your tree, even if it's got a cool pattern like that, uh, without these little imperfections will look uh, like a great um, healthy birch tree. Now as you get bigger with the bigger birch trees, those scars are going to be a little more um, defined, a little more 
kind of in your face. And so basically these scars happen because um, a branch breaks off or, or uh, gets broke off and that uh, there's some healing process involved with the tree and it has to heal itself. So that's what these scars are from, just a, a healing itself from the injury of losing a limb. And sometimes it could be um, from bugs or uh, different fungus or, or other things. Well, I hope your trees are turning out well. I wanted to take us out in the woods and, and kind of give us an idea of uh, just how cool these birch trees really are. Um, these, there's about seven different varieties of birch trees. This one here, we got a white birch or paper birch. And uh, if you're ever lost in the woods and you want to survive, being by one of these guys is going to be your best bet. These things are so cool. They are so useful, not only is it a hardwood that you can use to make if you've got the right tools bowls and houses and anything you can possibly think of made out of wood uh, are obviously great for making um, fires burn right up like paper now if you've got a tree and you want to keep it alive don't strip it all the way around because that will kill the tree like I mentioned before we have these uh, lenticles which are basically what helps the, the tree breathe, it takes in the, the um, carbon dioxide, takes, exhales the oxygen, that all happens right here in these lenticles. Um, but uh, the Indians use these trees not only for um, building wigwams and they use the bark, which is waterproof, uh, for their uh, canoes. They um, obviously used it for fire, but there's so many great uses not only for building purposes but these trees are actually if you're trying to survive in the woods these things will keep you alive uh, i've peeled a little piece of bark off here to kind of show you there's like some inner bark here the sap in the spring can actually be used um, just like syrup from a, a sugar maple now it won't be as sweet of a syrup but it still produces a sap that you can drink to stay alive uh, the sap can also be boiled to turn into a, a semi-sweet um, syrup as well. And this inner bark has some, some great healing properties. Now this stuff here has got, uh, and I'm not a doctor, so uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's uh, methyl salicylate. I don't know what it's called, but anyway, it is a... Uh, chemical that will help with pain relief. So if you got um, um, arthritis or other different ailments that need some pain reliever, this stuff here will help with that. Also they use it for uh, making teas. It'll have the same kind of a taste as a uh, winter green, uh, kind of a flavor. You can take this inner bark and take strips of it and you can boil it and make noodles. Um, they've taken this and uh, dried it out and ground it to make flour for making bread. Uh, might not be as great as, um, say, wheat flour, but hey, if you're starving and you need some food, you know, that's, that's what to do. So, the birch trees are an awesome tree, um, but it's also a wonder that God made these things to be a great illustration. And what a better illustration of who Jesus is than by looking at one of these birch trees. The, I'm going to take us to the Bible. It says in Isaiah um, chapter 53, starting in verse 5, it says, But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening of our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. 
or some translations may have, by his stripes we are healed. Now we look at this tree, this tree has healing properties. Um, if you're sick, if you've got a wound, you go to these things and it helps. Um, if we look at this as far as a perspective of an illustration of who Jesus is, that, that if you're lost, if you're in the woods if, you know, of life and you're spiritually lost, being by one of these things will give you protection, will give you the, the process to, to make sure you have a shelter, you have fire, have everything you need to take care of, and has healing. That's exactly who Jesus is. Spiritually, we're all imperfect. We've all made mistakes. We've all sinned. It is only through Jesus that we find that healing. God is so cool. They call him in the Old Testament. Uh, Abraham called him Jehovah Jireh, God my provider. And just like this birch tree, Jesus is our provider. He not only provides um, sustenance for us to stay alive. Now he doesn't give us uh, more than, you know, like he may bless you way far beyond what you need. But he gives us what we need. We depend on him to make sure that he provides provides for us in the small things but he also provides healing and that healing comes through him it says um, that we are healed because of his stripes just like these things have stripes that are the breath of the tree Jesus is the breath of life he is the giver of life he is the giver of all good gifts and he gave the greatest gift on the cross it says that uh, a man is cursed when he hangs on a tree. And that's exactly what he did. He became a curse for us because of our sin. A penalty had to be paid. And that pit was paid on a tree. Where he was nailed to that tree. He was whipped. The stripes from that whip, that cat of nine tails, was on his back. And through his death, the death of God himself, have been forgiven because that debt has been paid. We have been healed from our sickness of sin because he forgave it on our behalf. If we believe in him and accept him as our Lord and Savior, as the one who provided that salvation for us, we accept that salvation and accept him as our Lord and Savior, willing to follow him in our life and turn away from the sin that led him to the cross then you 